<laughs> I'm outside, but I had to trick the damn thing. They already shined the flashlight to keep the flash from coming on. Because I didn't feel that I needed it. It's funny, you know, I was working. And a, a small flock of geese went over again. Now, every morning, they go over going that way. And evening, man, yeah, they're going back the other way. And there's maybe like 25 of them. But it's interesting. Uh, for some reason, the way the land lays here, uh, this is a major flyway for flocks of geese. I mean, they always come through here every spring and every fall, but these are on a daily <laughs> basis, which is weird. And they always honk when they go over. You know, I, I was saying about uh, odd materials, you know, that I've got a lot of interesting materials. And I was certain to them. And I run across this, and I remember when I bought it, I was puzzled by it. I don't, I don't quite know what it's made out of. I mean, it's like a very primitive sort of thing. It might be, I don't know, it might be camel hair. <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting though. But it was made on a fairly small loom because it is made of three strips this wide and they are all sewn together down the whole length. But it's one of them things that it is so interesting or just so peculiar. I mean, it's kind of cool. So I can't quite bring myself to make a rug out of that. might be hemp or it might be like a linen warp and some kind of I don't know it's an odd one to me you know I'm very familiar with fibers but this particular thing which makes me think camel I don't know. I don't know what else to think. But I'll have to hang on to it. I mean, if it was torn up, I could see turning it into a rug, but it appears to be in good shape. Just very strange. Okay, earlier today, if you remember, there was a, a movie called Dr. Strangelove from uh, early 60s, mid 60s. I had watched that again because I was thinking about this uh, you know, over in Europe, playing around, cruising back and forth. Our, our B 52 bombers out of Minot. Earlier, they had flown over to England, and now they're kind of patrolling the area there. And it made me think of that movie. And then, you know, like our, our, uh, our military is puzzled. You know, we send all this stuff over to Ukraine. And the Russians will take it out once it gets to Ukraine. But our military is puzzled is why they don't take it out before Ukraine. Why don't they uh, sink some ships or shoot down some air transport? They can't figure this out. So they're going to actually step it up a little bit just to provoke the Russians. And this just seems incredibly reckless to me. You know, they're gonna, you know, their intention is evidently to push this until we have an incident. 
that then we can escalate it all out of control. But it made me think of that movie. Because, you know, <laughs> those V-52s are, are there for a reason. It just seems insane. But to hear our military and, and the Pentagon saying, you know, they're, they're, they're rattled because that they haven't actually taken down an American plane. So they're going to step it up until they do. Just incredible to me. You know, despite that fact that only 30% of this stuff actually ever gets to the battlefield, they're going to push a bunch more in. Just to try to provoke some response from the Russians. If they can just get them to take down NATO aircraft. Strange thing to be striving for. <laughs>